All right, here with U.S. Combat Sports, here with Chico Camus, about to make his UFC debut. All right, man, Chico, we're going to go through all of it. You know, growing up, pre-MMA, you know, what you know what type of stuff did you do? Then, you know, how did you end up finding MMA? Oh, man, I always liked wrestling as a kid, man. Ever since I was, like, four years old. I mean, like, WWF wrestling. So I can name every wrestler since I was, like, three, four years old. My kid's the same way. But, um... I've been always been an aggressive kid. I always like wrestling around with my friends and playing around and stuff like that. So uh, it pretty much led into my teenage years. But uh, how, how I got into MMA, I met Anthony Pettis, a mutual friend, like I said, at a barbershop. We got into it talking. And uh, he brought me down to his gym. A uh, uh, kid from the streets, tough guy. I always thought I'd kick everybody's ass pretty much. So he brought me down to the gym and pretty much humbled me and showed me everything what fighting was all about. And after that, it pretty much just took off from there. He introduced me to Duke down at Rufus Sport. And the rest was golden, man. You know, can you kind of go through that first time when you walked in to, you know, Anthony brings you into the gym, you're like, what is this? You know, what was your first impression of MMA? Actually, I, I from the, the first gym he took me to was on like Highway 100 in uh, Beloit over there. It was that uh, Evolution Martial Arts. So the gym was pretty much nothing, man. It was a mat on the floor, taekwondo mat, pretty much like our little gray and black mats that we had, the cheap mats. And it was just me and him. He was fighting, he was training for his fights. I think he only had like two or three amateur fights at the time. So he was pretty much training for his fights. I think he was looking for me to be a body to beat up to get him ready for fights. And then once he seen how serious I was taking it and I was going to take it to the next level the same way he was, from there we just took off, man. We pretty much started the Evolution Martial Arts and from there he introduced me to Duke. Duke fell in love with me and took over my career. Awesome, okay, so we're gonna skip ahead. You know, a couple, few fights in. You know, after a while, Duke says, all right, Chico, you're ready to fight WEC guys like Hosman and Pearson. You know, what was your thoughts walking into the cage then and when you got those victories, how big was that? And what did it tell you about where you were going in your career? Um, it told me a lot, man. I like, I like I was saying, and I said in the earlier interview too, uh, my, my family members and stuff used to joke around with me. So this is getting kind of inside on where I'm coming from. Uh, family members used to joke around me. I used to beat a couple guys and stuff like that. So when I started fighting the, the, the Ken Sitzlers and the guys who were on buses and the guys who were on posters and had names and they finished all these good guys and stuff like that, it was pretty much for me to see, you know, I was stepping into the cage and it was me finding out if I could hang with the big boys. So the, the, the Pearson fight, for first beating Sitzler and winning the belt was, was big for me because I always had my nephews and my brothers and everybody teased me saying, oh, look at this guy's on a poster and he's on a bus, he's going to kick your butt, stuff like that. And then I end up dropping that guy. And then they're like, oh, now Pearson's really good. He finished it. He's got 30 guys with a triangle choke and he's going to get you. And then I knock him out. And then they're like, okay, but Hosman was in the WEC and that guy's really good and he's going to get you. And then I dropped him. So little by little, me, me beating them guys was letting myself know that I, I can hang with the best out here. And then also training with the guys like Anthony and Eric and everybody down at Rufus Sport. I mean, if you can strike with these boys, for sure, for sure. So okay, so those were the wins. You know, a little down the road, then you matched up with another WBC veteran, Jamil Masu. Awesome fight. I know U.S. Combat Sports had it as fight of the year candidate. You know, ultimately it didn't go your way. But what do you take from a fight like that? That you have a good showing, but may not. You know, you may not win. What do you take from a fight like that? Everything. Um, uh, I, I most most was sticking to my game plan. I, I got off the game plan in that fight. I mean, I gave up a lot of size. There's no excuse that I lost the fight. Um, but sticking to the game plan. Um, I was used to to coming in, landing big shots, and then I'd see the fighter's face change, and he didn't want to strike anymore. And Masuza, he's a veteran, man. You know, the guy's got him with big shots before, and he stuck to the game plan. So me hitting him with the first right hand, and and he he, yeah, he got wild with everything, but he stuck to everything, you know. And I seen I hit him with the big right hand, and I kind of got off the game plan because I started looking for big shots. So mostly it just taught me to just stick with the game plan, go in there, and if, and one shot's not always gonna finish the fight. Sometimes you gotta you gotta keep hammering and keep working at it, and and and, and shots by shots, you know. It's like the new cause of collecting coins, like in Mario, you know. If the one big shot don't work, keep collecting coins and keep tapping them, and you know you'll I'll strike and get the win, man. Okay, so, you know, a couple more fights happen from there. Uh, oh, then you go, you go into the Tachi tournament. You fight two fights in there and look really good. You don't finish it, but you get that call. What was the Tachi tournament? What was your experience in there with that organization? Oh, it was a good experience. Um, they were fighting good guys in there. Like, I fought my first fight was against Danny Geary, another tall guy, lanky guy, pretty much a jits guy. And, and uh, I pretty much used my wrestling. Like, dudes getting me to try to be more of a, a mixed martial artist. I never really used my wrestling to win fights. I pretty much just beat guys up standing or quick submissions and stuff like that. So coming into that fight, I, I wanted to use my stand-up, but I knew this guy, he had good jiu-jitsu games, so I kind of wanted to test myself. So I wanted to get myself in deep waters and put him on his back and see 
if I could be slick with getting out the submissions, and he was also my wrestler in my submission game, and everything worked good, man. Then I fought Alpaz Killick, which is another great wrestler. Uh, the guy was undefeated, and uh, I came in and I out wrestled the wrestler. So that was really big for me, and let me, you know, it was a confidence booster to let me know that I could wrestle a wrestler, strike with strikers, and play jiu-jitsu with jiu-jitsu guys. Awesome. Then, before, you know, before you're going to meet in the finals there, uh, you get to call the UFC. What went through your mind when you heard UFC wanted you and Chico Camus is going to fight in the UFC? Man, I've dream come true, man. It's what I've, been, what I've been waiting for, what the whole five years and the works have been. Uh, it was, I was ecstatic, man. I was actually I was actually about two or three blocks. I mean, I, everybody knows my mom is my number one fan in the world, my, my everything. And, uh, and that, that was everything. I was two blocks away from my mom's house, actually, and he called me and told me that Sean Shelby asked specifically for me. He called the gym and he didn't say, Duke, do you have a 135? He said, Chico, you know, Duke is Chico Camus ready to come to the UFC. So it was big for me. But I actually, I was two blocks away from my mom's house. I pulled up my mom and I, I'm in the back and I'm literally like almost in tears, you know. I get off the phone with Duke and I run upstairs and, I, and I, my mom and my nephews, the same guys who were telling me this guy's going to beat you and this guy's going to beat you are right there. And I run up there and I'm like, man, I'm in the UFC and the house was going crazy. It was like my birthday party, man. It was like we were at the club, but it, it was amazing. Man, dream come true. I couldn't be more happy. My family couldn't be more happy, and my sons couldn't be more happy. Okay, so, so you know, the elation kind of made me wear down a little bit. Now it's time. Dustin Peg just weeks away. You know, what are your thoughts on Dustin as a fighter, and what do you see out of him? Dustin's dope, man. He's a dope dude. He's, he's a striker, um, more of a counter striker, too. He really, he really doesn't push the pace and come at you more. It's kind of my style too. I, I like to sit back, wait for you to make a mistake and capitalize on it. And he's pretty much the same way. Long, lanky, but I fought a lot of long, lanky guys before. I fought uh, three or four guys that were over 5'10", so I'm pretty much used to, to, to the size advantage, but Dustin's a good dude. Uh, strong right hand, and, and, and he likes to clinch in the knees and the elbows and stuff like that. So I want to come and fight, use my ankles, be in and out, and you know, hit the guy a couple times and be gone before he gets a chance to hit me. You know, I think when most people think of you, they think of a striker. But as you said, you know, you used your wrestling in the, you know, the Tachi tournament. What do you think? Do you think people underestimate your ground game a lot of times? I, I, I definitely think so, man. I'm slick. If you ever come watch me in this gym, I, I have some slick moves, man. That, I'm, that I, 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 don't, I don't, if I don't have to use it, why show it? You know what I'm saying? If nobody's putting me in a position to, to show off my jujitsu or show off my wrestling, why use it? I'll keep it a secret and hide it in the bag until when I need to pull it out. If I'm beating you with jabs, I'll jab you until I win the UFC title. You know, I, I, I'm not going to do anything else. I, I, I'm, I'm strong on my feet. I'm confident wherever the fight goes, whether I'm on my back or whether I'm on top of you. So, mixed martial arts. And it's 2012, man. Everybody's dope everywhere. So you can't be a one-dimensional fighter or you can have a short career. For sure. You know, when you when you study Dustin and see what he does, and then you kind of look at yourself and what you do, where do you guys, where do you think you two kind of meet? Where, where do you... Where are you better than him? You know, what are your strengths over his? Or you know, something like that. Where do you guys? How do you guys match up? Um, uh, Dustin, I, I wouldn't. I mean, kind of questionable chin. You know, he's got rocked a few times. Uh, uh, big fights. Uh, TJ Dillashaw kind of outstruck him, and I pretty much almost have the same style. Fast striker, in and out, in and out, and uh, TJ kind of beat him up. But uh, he's good, man. He has a good rear naked choke. Like I said, good lip clinch, good in the knees. So I just see, need to use my angles, be in and out, and I. I dynamite in my right and my left hand, so hopefully I can land some big punches and we can get a bonus, man, because I, I, need, I need some new clothes and some new cars, man. <laughs> How does a perfect fight play out for you, and you know, what would be an ideal situation, that, realistically? Uh, come in and finish him with, uh, with whatever round. I, I, I want to finish. Um, like I said, my last two fights were a decision, so I want to come in and, and show the UFC. I mean, I think I'm an exciting fighter either way it goes. I don't think I've ever had a point fight in my life whether it was 30 seconds or 15 minutes. So I want, I want to come in, I want to push the pace, and I want to show you know, the guys at the UFC, Dana, Shelby, and Silva that, 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 I, that I'm another movie sport fighter that's bringing it to the table, man. And I'm, and I'm ready for this. I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity. I'm ready to show the world what you okay to do. You have a prediction for the fight? Knockout, man. Let's go. Knockout and TKO. Either way, man, let's get it. You know, kind of backtracking you off the fight a little bit. You know, you talked about your past and how meeting Anthony and brought you into the gym. What if you never met Anthony? What do you think you'd be doing? Where do you think you'd be right now in life? Uh, you know, I, like I said, I was, I was hanging with a rough crowd, uh, gangs, and you know all that bad stuff. You know, stuff that I'm not proud about. But it's not what I'm doing then. It's what I'm doing now. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I was pretty much becoming a father around the time that I met Anthony, which really connected me to mixed martial arts. And I mean, I was going down the wrong road, and I couldn't do that raising a kid. So. 
I, 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 I mean, I, no telling where I would be, though, man. No telling at all. You know. You know, watching you guys just go through practice and interact, you know, you guys play, the, you know, the word. You guys seem like a family. Is that how you describe Rufus Ford here? Brotherhood, man. Brotherhood. Everybody here, man, I'm from, 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 the, from the, the amateurs to, to the pros, everybody in here is treated like a brotherhood. Like I was just telling the guys, after this fight, we need to try to plan a big trip to the Dells and Six Flags, get big picnics going. Because, I mean, I love everybody in here. I wouldn't rather train in nowhere in the world, man. Uh, I'm really close with, with, with the UFC guys. But there's guys in here that nobody even knows that I'm really connected with. They, you guys in here have great stories and great features. Everybody here is great. I love everybody. Talked about it a little before, but I mean, you can't go to a fight that you're at and not see your mom right up there with this shirt. How awesome was it? You know, what was that feeling like when you told your mom, you know, everything? I'm in the UFC now. I, I was heaven, man. Like, I mean, just to see the look on her face. I mean, like, I mean, like, I, I, mean, I said this a while back before. Like, coming, coming from where I came from, mom didn't have too much to be proud of. You know, mom didn't have too much to be proud of. Her friends asking, you know, you know, how's the family going? How's Chico doing? And she didn't have much to, to smile about. So, so now, mom, mom loves bingo. Mom loves the casino. So, mom's at bingo and she's talking to her friends and she finally can brag about her little boy. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing something positive and like I, I, I love to give back. You know what I'm saying? And especially to my mom who's been there from day one. She's done a lot for me. There's stories that nobody else knows that that you know what I'm saying that I hold deep in my heart. So for me to be able to, to, to give back, for me to be able to fight this fight and pay my mom's rent and things like that means the world to me. So I love that lady to death. Awesome. Last question. A lot of new people are gonna be watching Chico Camus in just a few days. What are they gonna see? What are you gonna show all the who is Chico Camus? Chico Camus is an exciting fighter I'm from the south side of the wall. Um, like if you have ever been to one of my fights or watched me, you, you see me come out, I'm teary eyed, you can cut the tension with a knife. You know it's you know I'm dead ass serious when I come to the cage. There's no jokes and, and I'm bringing it, man. Don't blink. Don't blink. Dynamite both these hands, man. Love it. Congrats, man. Good luck Thanks, and we're all cheering for you.